from Jane Gillies to David Thorne. Subject, overdue account. Dear David, our records indicate that your account is overdue by the amount of two thirty three ninety five. If you have already made this payment, please contact us within the next seven days to confirm payment has been applied to your account and is no longer outstanding. Yours sincerely, Jane Gillies. From David Thorne to Jane Gillies. Subject, overdue account. Dear Jane, I do not have any money, so I'm instead sending you this drawing I did of a spider. I value the drawing at two thirty three ninety five, so trust that this settles the matter. Regards, David. Hey! From Jane Gillies. Dear David, thank you for contacting us. Unfortunately, we are unable to accept drawings as payment, and your account remains in arrears of two thirty three ninety five. Please contact us within the next seven days to confirm payment has been applied to your account and is no longer outstanding. Yours sincerely, Jane Gillies. Dear Jane, can I have my drawing of a spider back then, please? Regards, David. Dear David, you emailed the drawing to me. D- do you want me to email it back to you? Yours sincerely, Jane Gillies. Dear Jane, yes, please. Regards, David. Attached spider dot gif. <laughs> From David Thorne to Jane Gillies. Subject, whose spider is that? Dear Jane, are you sure this drawing of a spider is the one I sent you? This spider only has seven legs, and I do not feel I would have made such an elementary mistake when I drew it. Regards, David. Dear David, yes, it is the same drawing. I copied and pasted it from the email you sent me on the 8th. David, your account is still overdue by the amount of two thirty three ninety five. Please make this payment as soon as possible. Yours sincerely, Jane Gillies. Thank you for contacting me. I'm currently away on leave traveling through time and will be returning last week. Regards, David. Hello, I am back and have read through your emails and accept that despite missing a leg, that drawing of a spider may indeed be the one that I sent you. I realize with hindsight it is possible you rejected the drawing of a spider due to this obvious limb omission, but did not point it out in an effort to avoid hurting my feelings. As such, I'm sending you a revised drawing with the correct number of legs as full payment for any amount outstanding. I trust this will bring the matter to a conclusion. Regards, David. (laughs) <laughs> Dear David, as I have stated, we do not accept drawings in lay of money for accounts outstanding. We accept check, bank check, money order, or cash. Please make a payment this week to avoid incurring any additional fees. Yours sincerely, Jane Gillies. I understand and will definitely make a payment this week if I remember. As you have not accepted my second drawing as payment, please return the drawing to me as soon as possible. It was silly of me to assume I could provide you with something of completely no value whatsoever, waste your time, and then attach such a large amount to it. Regards, David. Attached. Spider2.gif (laughs) <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to my channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an individual by the name of David Thorne. Uh, this will be one of the first times where we're looking at somebody with a very positive spin. David Thorne is a very funny individual. I remember seeing a lot of his stuff posted back in the uh, the old days on like 4chan, around like 2010 or whatever. So yeah, we're going to be reading some of David Thorne's uh, excellent escapades, and apparently he has a book out now. This is not a shill video, this is not a, a sponsored video, but if you like his content, maybe you might want to go and take a look at the book that he's selling. But for now, we're going to be taking a look at some more things here on his website, some of the classics. I have read your website, and it is obviously that you're a fogot. From George Lewis to David Thorne. Subject. No subject. Not necessary. Dear George, thank you for your email. While I have no idea what a fogot is, I will assume it is a term of endearment and appreciate you taking time out from calculating launch trajectories or removing temporal lobe tumors to contact me with such... I have attached a signed photo as per your request. Regards, David. To George, my number one fan. Thanks for your support. Your Fogot, David. From George Lewis. I didn't ask for a photo, fag. And I meant faggot, you homo. I'm not a fan, so you could shove your signed photo up your ass. You would probably enjoy that. Whoa! Go suck your boyfriend's dick in a gay club. 
Dear George, while I do not have a boyfriend, I do have a friend who is homosexual, and I once asked him, do you ever think about having sex with me because you're gay? To which he replied, do you ever think about having sex with Rosie O'Donnell because you're straight? Same thing. If I was inclined to have a boyfriend, I would select one my height and weight to save having to readjust the driver's seat position. I'm not interested in doubling my wardrobe as I wear the same outfit every day to facilitate speedy identification should I ever be in a boating accident. Although I have never been to a gay club as such, when I was about 10, a friend and I constructed a clubhouse in my backyard using timber stolen from a building site down the street. Our club, which we named the Kiss Club due to a certain band being popular at the time, employed an extensive entry exam in which the applicant had to know all the words to love gun and not be a girl. As we had no other friends and knew no girls apart from my sister, this made sense at the time. The next day after school, having managed to recruit several new members by promising laminated membership cards and changing the entry exam to knowing the names of the band members, we all rode to my place to participate in our first club meeting, only to discover my sister, outraged by the no girls rule and armed with a four liters of paint left over from a recent bedroom redesigned, had painted the clubhouse pink and added ing to the end of the word kiss. Also, despite your inference, I have managed up to this point to avoid putting most things in my bottom, primarily due to the possibility that I might enjoy it and get carried away and move on to watermelons or mid-sized family autos. When I was about eight, I drew a face on my hand and practiced kissing it, which I will admit is a little gay, and I've often thought there would be advantages to homosexuality, such as uh, Abercrombie and Fitch rewards points, successful couch fabric selection capabilities, and the gift of dance, with or without a top on. This would come extremely useful if I needed $500 and I saw a poster advertising a dance competition with a first prize of $500. Regards, David. If you lived close by gay cunt, I would be over your place with five friends tonight. Dear George, I knew we would get along well. We've only known each other for one day and already you're organizing a party. Not sure where gay cunt is, but if I did lived close by to it, I would definitely be up for that. We could all sit outside at banana lounges discussing the best way to rebuild a four-wheel drive transmission and agree through shared stories of conquest supporting our assertions that there is no basis to the proposition that those least assured of their persuasions are the first to condemn others for theirs. Although the ideal would be for everyone to be capable of love without fear, restraint, or obligation, clearly this does not apply to homosexuals. At no time during the night would you comment on how much you liked my Abercrombie and Fitch pants or ask, is that a Marcel Brewer shirt? I love the fabric selection. And when we danced, we would all leave our tops on. Regards, David. No, fag. I live in Charleston, West Virginia, the best country in the world. I wasn't saying it would be a party. We would smash your fucking skull in. If you're calling me a fag, you can go fuck yourself because I have a girlfriend. From David Thorne to George Lewis, subject Yeehaw Y'all. Dear George, is she also your sister? I checked out her photos on your Facebook page, and while she's not exactly my type, I accept that other people have different preferences even when those preferences include facial tattoos and stretch pants constructed from sufficient material to shelter a small village and their livestock. Some men enjoy dancing with other men without their tops on, while others prefer the company of a woman two KFC family buckets away from upsetting the planet's rotational axis. I read somewhere that Eskimos prefer women of girth as it provides warmth at night. I've seen the size of those igloos, though, and there's no way your girlfriend would make it through one of the openings. You could probably just construct one around her, and despite the hassle of having to trudge out into the snow every day to catch and prepare the 80 seals required to maintain her mass, it would be like a kiln in there. If I were an Eskimo, I would build my igloo next to a supermarket or on a tropical beach. Regards, David. She isn't fat, you fag! And that she got a tattoo is a teardrop because her family is dead. Did she eat them? Fuck off, fag. Her family, they died in a traffic accident. Have some respect. Go put some more gel in your hair or dye it bulk like an emo skinny fag. And how can you see my Facebook page pictures? Dear George, yes, I have heard that those motorhomes can be a bitch to steer, especially around tight corners during a police chase or a moonshine run. 
I will concede to 50% of your description of me as a skinny fag being correct. If our bodies are temples, mine would be a heavily shelled Iranian mosque express. To rectify this, I've instigated a fitness and weight training regime. Once a week, I carry two heavy garbage bags out to the sidewalk and jog back. As this week was my first session and I did not want to overexert myself, I took the car. Obviously with a few breaks in between to rehydrate and stretch. I have access to your Facebook page due to the friend request you accepted from the Oscar Wilde profile I constructed yesterday. I assume the name would hold no relevance to you and consistency being the last refuge of the unimaginative, I typed redneck wearing baseball cap into Google images to locate a photo you would identify and feel comfortable with. Regards, David. That's fraud. I will report you to the police and to Facebook, fag. I would shoot you in the face with my 32 if you were here right now. Dear George, yes, I'm fairly certain there is a worldwide criminal investigation network dedicated solely to bringing those who construct fake Facebook profiles to justice. I believe the punishment is tar and feathering in most parts of the world, except West Virginia, where you were stripped naked, oiled up, and chased around a paddock while wearing a pig mask. Apparently in West Virginia, this is also known as a date. Variations include substituting the paddock with a motorhome or the person with an actual pig, or in your case, both. Also, as it is probably far more acceptable for men in West Virginia to hold guns than hands, I will assume the term shooting me in the face with your 32 is, is not a euphemism. Regards, David. I've deleted you from my Facebook and reported you. I hope you die of AIDS, fag. Don't bothering emailing me again because Kazoo, I won't read it. Yes, he will. No, I fucking won't, fag. So there's some question as to whether this fellow is a real individual who has like actual conversations with people, and these are the the actual correspondences of like a total asshole who's like fucked over his life by just being a dickhead to everybody. Or if he maybe just makes this stuff up and he he performs both parts of the, 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 the story, I'm not sure exactly. I like to believe that this is all real and this is just how he actually is in real life. That would be quite something else. Um, Dear neighbor, you are not invited to my party. Hello, my name is Matthew and I've moved into apartment three. I'm having a housewarming party next week on the 14th. If the noise gets too loud that night, let me know. Nice to meet you anyhow. Uh, let me know if you ever need anything. Cheers, Matthew. Got his mobile and his email there. From David Thorne to Matthew Smythe. Subject, RSVP. Dear Matthew, thank you for the party invite. At first glance, I thought it may be a child's party, what with it being vibrant and having balloons, but I realize you probably did your best with what little tools were available. I wouldn't miss it for the world. What time would you like me to be there? Regards, David. Hi, David. Sorry, the note was just to let you know that we might be a bit loud that night. The party warming is really just for friends and family, but you can come drop by for a beer if you like. Cheers, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Including me in your list of friends and family means a lot. You and I don't tend to have long conversations when we meet in the hallway, and I plan to put a stop to that. Next time we bump into each other, I intend to have a very long conversation with you, and I'm very sure that you're looking forward to that as much as I am. I've told my friend Ross that you're having a party, and he's as excited as I am. Do you want us to bring anything, or will everything be provided? Regards, David. Hi, David. A as I said, my housewarming is just for friends and family. There's not a lot of room, so can't really have many people come. Sorry about that, mate. Cheers, Matthew. Dear Matthew, I can appreciate that. Our apartments are not very large, are they? I myself like to go for a jog every night to keep fit, but fear leaving the house, so I have to jog on the spot, taking very small steps with my arms straight down. I understand the problems of space restrictions all too well. If you'd like to store some of your furniture at my place during the party, you're quite welcome to. If we move your cane furniture into my spare room for the night and scatter cushions on the ground, that would provide a lot more seating and create a cozy the atmosphere at the same time. I have a mirror ball that you can borrow. I've told Ross not to invite anyone else due to the space constraints, so it'll just be us two and my other friend Simon. When I told Simon that Ross and I were going to a party, he became quite angry that I had not invited him as well, so I really didn't have any choice seeing as he can become quite violent. Sometimes I'm afraid to even be in the same room as him. So just myself, Ross, and Simon. Simon's girlfriend has a work function on that night, but might come along after that if she can get a lift with friends. Regards, David. What the fuck? No Nobody can come to the housewarming party. It's just for friends and family. 
I don't even know who these people are. How do you know I have cane furniture? Are you the guy in apartment one? Hi, Matthew. I understand it is an exclusive party, and I appreciate you trusting my judgment on who to bring. I just assumed you have cane furniture. Doesn't everybody? Cane is possibly one of the most renewable natural resources we have after plastic. It is not only strong, but lightweight and attractive. Every item in my apartment is made of cane, including my television. Looks like the one from Gilligan's Island, but is in color, of course. You remember that episode where a robot came to the island? That was the best one, in my opinion. I always preferred Mary Jane to Ginger. Same with the Flintstones. I found Betty much more attractive than Wilma, but then I'm not really keen on redheads at all. They have freckles all over the body, did you know? It's the ones on the back and the shoulders that creep me out the most. Anyway, Ross rang me today all excited about the party and asked me what the theme is. I told him that I don't think there is a theme and we discussed it and I feel that it should be an 80s themed party. I have a white suit and projector and I'm coming as Nick Kershaw. I made a looping tape of Wouldn't It Be Good to play as I'm sure you will agree that this song rocks and has stood the test of time well. I'm in the process of redesigning your invites appropriately and we'll get a few hundred of them printed off later today. I will have to ask you for the money for this as print cartridges for my Epson are pretty expensive. I stopped making this model a month after I bought it and I have to get the cartridges sent from China. Around $120 should cover it. You can just pop the money in my letterbox if I don't see you before tonight. Regards, David. What the fuck are you talking about? There's no theme for the party. It's just a few friends and family. No one else can come. It's only for my friends and family. Do you understand? Do not print anything out because I'm not paying for something I don't need. I didn't ask you to do. Look, I'm sorry, but I am heaps busy and that night is not convenient. Are you in apartment one? Hello, Matthew. I agree that it is not very convenient and must admit that when I first received your invitation, I was perplexed that it was on a Sunday night, but who am I to judge? No, I'm in apartment 3B. Our bedroom walls are touching, so when we're sleeping, our heads are only a few feet apart. If I put my ear to the wall, I can hear you. I also agree with you that having a particular theme for your party may not be the best choice. It makes more sense to leave it open as a generic fancy dress party. That way everybody can come in whatever they want. Once I went to a party in a bear outfit, which worked out well as it was a freezing and I was the only one warm. As it won't be cold the night of your party, I've decided to come as a ninja. I think it would be really good if you dressed as a ninja as well, and we could perform a martial arts display for the other guests. I have real swords, and we'll bring them. If you need help with your costume, let me know. I've made mine by wrapping a black t-shirt around my face with a hooded jacket and cut finger holes in black socks for the gloves. I do not have any black pants, so we'll spray paint my legs on the night. It is a little hard to breathe in the costume, so I will need you to keep the window open during the party to provide good air circulation. Actually, I just had a thought. How awesome would it be if I arrived through the window like a real ninja? We should definitely do that. I just measured the distance between our balconies, and I should be able to jump it. I once slept across a creek that was over five meters wide and almost made it. Also, you mentioned in your invitation that if there was anything I needed to let you know, my car is going in for a service next week, and I was wondering, seeing as we're good friends now, would it be okay to borrow yours on that day? I hate catching the buses. They're full of poor people who don't own cars. Regards, David. What the fuck? No, you can't borrow my car, and there is no fucking 3B. I reckon you are that guy from apartment one. You're not coming to my house warming, and you're not bringing any of your friends. What the fuck is wrong with you? The only people invited are friends and family, I told you that. It is just drinks, there's no fucking fancy dress, and only people I know are coming. I don't want to be rude, but Jesus fucking Christ, man. Hello, Matthew. I've been away since Thursday, so I've not been able to check my email from home. Flying back late today in time for the party, and just wanted to say that we're really looking forward to it. We'll probably get there around 11 or 12, just when it starts to liven up. Simon's girlfriend Kathy's work function was cancelled so she can make it after all, which is good news. She'll probably have a few friends with her so they'll take the minivan. Also, I have arranged a pinata. Regards, David. I like to imagine that, that he, he came to the party later and they set aside their differences and he was like the life of the party. The ducks in the bathroom are not mine. Dear Mr. Thorne, it has come to our attention through complaints by other tenants in your building that you have a dog at the premises. Under the agreement you signed as part of the strata, animals are not permitted. Please call me or email me at to discuss this matter as soon as possible. Yours sincerely, Helen Bailey. From David Thorne to Helen Bailey, subject, pets in the building. Dear Helen, thank you for your letter concerning pets in my apartment. 
I understand that having dogs in the apartment is a violation of the agreement due to the comfort and well-being of my neighbors. I'm currently soundproofing my apartment with egg cartons, as I realize my dogs can cause quite a bit of noise, especially during feeding time when I release live rabbits. Regards, David. Hello, David. I have received your email and wish to remind you that the Strata Agreement states that no animals are allowed in the building, regardless of if your apartment is soundproof. How many dogs do you have at the premises? Dear Helen, currently I only have eight dogs, but one is expecting puppies, and I'm very excited by this. I'm hoping for a litter of at least ten, as this is the number required to participate in dog sled racing. I have read every Jack London novel in preparation and have constructed my own sled from timber I borrowed from the construction site across the road during the night. I've devised a plan which I feel will ensure me taking first place at the next National Dog Sled Championships. For the first year of the puppy's life, I intend to say the word MUSH and then chase them violently around the apartment while yelling and hitting saucepan lids together. I have estimated that the soundproofing of my apartment should block out at least 60% of the noise and the dogs will learn to associate the word MUSH with great fear. So when I yell it on race day, the panic and released adrenaline will spur them on to being winners. I am so confident of this being a foolproof plan that I I intend to sell all my furniture the day before the race and bet the proceeds on coming first place. Regards, David. David, I'm unsure of what to make of your email. Do you have pets in the apartment or not? Dear Helen, no, I have a goldfish, but due to the air conditioner in my apartment being stuck in a constant two degrees Celsius, the water in its bowl is iced over and he's not moved for a while, so I do not think he's capable of disturbing the neighbors. The ducks in the bathroom are not mine. The noise which my neighbors possibly mistook for a dog in the building was just the looping tape I have of dogs barking, which I play at high volume while I'm at work to deter potential burglars from breaking in and stealing my Tupperware. I need it to keep food fresh. Once I ate leftover Chinese that had been kept in an unsealed container and I experienced complete awareness. The next night I tried eating it again but only experienced chest pains and diarrhea. Regards, David. Hello, David. You cannot play sounds of dogs or any noise at a volume that disturbs others. I'm sure you can appreciate that these rules are for the benefit of all residents in the building. Fish are fine. You cannot have ducks in the apartment, though. If it was small birds, that would be okay. Dear Helen, they are very small ducks. Regards, David. David, under Section 4 of the Strata Residency Agreement, it states that you cannot have pets. You agreed to these rules when you signed the forms. These rules are set out to benefit everyone in the building, including yourself. Benefit yourself by reducing your own, like, rights. That's cool. Join Estrada today, everybody. Dear Helen, the ducks will no doubt be flying south for the winter soon, so it will not be an issue. It's probably for the best, as they're not getting along very well with my 17 cats anyway. David, I'm just going to write on the forums that we have investigated and you do not have any pets. Now, this is one great way to just deal with all of life's, life's problems. Just be the biggest asshole possible. And people will just like concede because they don't they don't just don't want to deal with you, you know? That'll about do it for our look into the spicy world of David Thorne. Uh I don't know, folks. Do you think that he's a real person? You think these are real email correspondences? I would like to believe as such. I would like to believe he's just burned bridges with everybody in his life. If you enjoyed the content of the video here, you might want to check out his book. Uh again, this isn't a sponsored video, but if you enjoy it, you might want to support the man behind it. Take it easy, folks. Thanks ever so much to our wonderful friends over on the Patreon. Jamie Brown, CJ Connolly, Assumed Chris, Ursula Holm, Rick Fastley, Psycho Ninja, Samuel Schlick, Brent Thornton, Zach Carter, Lulu Bell, Taylor, Spooky Skeleton, Ian Terpenning, Delta, a new friend on the list, Lucid Boar, and of course, the all-time top patron, the legend of the channel herself, Abby Chapman. Thank you guys so much, as usual. And uh, yeah, this video came out a little bit later than I wanted it to. A little bit earlier than I uh, uh, expected it to. Um, <laughs> some stuff got uh, shifted around. Plans change. And, you know, a, a video, a new video is born. So uh, how, do, how do you do? Um, yeah, we've got a few more in the pipeline for this month because I've been slacking. I've been slackadaisical with the channel and with the Patreon. And I feel pretty bad about that. So I got some Patreon stuff to do. I've got a, a movie review in the works. I've got a fucking, it's an educa there's an educational one that's a little less funny and a little more, ugh. And uh, yeah, stick around for the month of December, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I have no fr friends or family, really, and I've got nothing to do this Christmas. So why not fill the emotional void with tons of videos, I guess? I don't know. We'll, 
we'll see what happens. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for donating, and uh, thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. And this is a very special address to you. Penis. <laughs> <laughs>